Hello everyone and welcome to Thailand Unplugged with news from Southeast Asia. Let's have a quick look at some of the latest news coming up today. Finally, conclusive evidence of where the coronavirus originated. Been a few whistleblowers in Wuhan. Bangkok. An 18-year-old boy drives his 12 million Porsche into a tree. Yeah, whoops, these things really do go fast. Thailand and Harry Potter theme rally, which has got the whole of Thailand talking about the monarchy and Les Majesse, and also the military leaders. Australia's Chinese coronavirus death toll stands at 247, and Victoria, a state in Australia, has had stage 4 restrictions slammed on it. Over to Thailand and some buffaloes in Bangkok are on the run from the dinner plate. Hello there, I'm Stephen Clark and the wonderful Johnny Siam, bringing you the latest news from Southeast Asia and the wonderful land of smiles, Thailand. Those stories and many more coming up. Chinese scientists claim the coronavirus came from a lab and Wuhan wet market was a decoy. Yes, a Chinese whistleblower scientist who fled to the US has claimed that the coronavirus originated in a military lab. The claim which Chinese authorities have constantly denied was made by virologist Dr. Li Meng Yan during a live stream interview. She claims that the virus which has killed an estimated 690,000 people worldwide came from a People's Liberation Army PLA facility. Dr. Lee, a researcher at the Hong Kong School of Public Health, had previously accused Beijing of covering up the initial outbreak in Wuhan. During her research, she claimed she traced the outbreak to the PLA. Dr. Lee said, at the time, I had clearly assessed that the virus came from a Chinese Communist Party military lab. The Wuhan wet market was just used as a decoy. The virologist from Shandong in East China claimed it was no longer safe to remain if she reported her findings. I knew that once I spoke up, I would disappear at any time. It's like all the brave protesters in Hong Kong, she said. I could disappear at any time. Even my name would no longer exist. Exactly, they are lying and I have to hide because I know how they treat the whistleblower. Investigators have not found any evidence to corroborate the scientists' claim that the virus was man-made. In a statement, the Hong Kong School of Public Health said her assertion did not accord with the key factors as we understand them. She said she was asked to look into the new SARS-like virus that had originated in Wuhan back in December. In a statement, the Chinese embassy in the US said, we never heard of this person. The Batwoman. Dr. Shi Jingli, known as the Chinese Batwoman, was worried her creation, highly infectious coronavirus, had leaked from her lab in October. Early efforts to stop the widening circle of infection had failed. It had spread like wildfire through the densely populated city of Wuhan. The Chinese Communist Party authorities were also worried that the source of the epidemic would be traced back to the Wuhan lab to muddy the water on January the 3rd. Chinese National Health Commission ordered all bio labs in China to destroy not only the samples of the SARS-CoV-2 that they had isolated from these infections, but also the genetic sequence of the virus, RNA strand. Dr. Xi must have been only too happy to cover her own tracks, evidence suggesting she had already started doing so by destroying the evidence of the deadly virus actual origin in her lab. And what does the Chinese Communist Party have to say about all this? The Chinese government has responded swiftly and effectively to COVID-19 since its outbreak. All its efforts have been clearly documented in white paper. And now for some examples. Fighting the Coronavirus 19. China in action. With full transparency, facts tell all. Well, there you go. Almost brings a tear to your eye, doesn't it? The Chinese government continues to tell us that there is no scientific evidence the coronavirus was made in 
Chinese labs, and there is no evidence that it leaked from their labs. If Dr. Xi's research in any way connect with the PLA's bioweapon research program, this will go a long way toward explaining the Chinese Communist Party's bizarre behavior. So have you really noticed any bizarre behavior coming from the Chinese Communist Party at all? Have you seen any, anything really? South China Sea, um, Indian border, Taiwan, Hong Kong, any bizarre behavior? There's an old saying, you know, if it smells like shit, looks like shit, it probably is shit. So there you go, conclusive evidence that the coronavirus came from the Wuhan Communist Party laboratories. No it didn't, it came from the Americans, they do everything. We do everything with peaceful dialogue. <laughs> Bangkok, an 18-year-old teenager drives a blue Porsche right into a tree. Yes, he wrapped a $12 million Porsche around the tree. 18-year-old teenager. The accident took place on the exit off the tollway heading towards Changwatana Road in Pakrat. Officials notified the local rescue team and headed to inspect the accident right away. Officials found a blue Porsche 911 Carrara S with the Bangkok license plate number one. The car is worth about 12 million. There were four injured persons in the accident. The driver's name is Packin, 18 year old with a fractured right angle from the accident. A 15 year old boy, a 15 year old girl and a 14 year old girl. Fortunately, the three friends, 14 and 15 year olds, unreceived slight injuries. World Medical Hospital nearby. A 58-year-old employee at the electrical train station witnessed the accident. He said he was relaxing near the location when he suddenly heard a loud bang coming from the curb leading to the exit on the tollway. The 58-year-old rushed to the scene and found two males and two females trapped in the car. The driver had an injury to his right ankle and was stuck in the car while the other three were only slightly injured. Just amuses me what the parents were thinking buying such a powerful car for an 18-year-old who is just starting out in life to bring it to a tragic end like this. Buy him a little Honda so he can learn how to drive properly. Defaming the monarchy is punishable by up to 15 years in prison under Thailand's strict Les Majest laws. Thailand protesters openly criticised the monarchy in a Harry Potter themed rally. Demonstrators issued a rare reboot in a country where defaming the royals is punishable by 15 years in jail. Thai police have summoned five organizers of the student-led protest against the government, saying they have violated the coronavirus emergency degree that forbids large gatherings. Also, senior government officials on Wednesday filed a police complaint accusing the leader of the recent Harry Potter theme political rally of defaming the monarchy. Among those calling for questioning was human rights lawyer Anon, who on Monday had demanded reform of Thailand's powerful monarchy, a highly sensitive topic. Vice Minister of the Office of the Prime Minister said, The speech infringed upon the monarchy, revered amongst all ties. He distorted the truth and made disparaging mockery and instigated remarks that invited others to criticize the monarchy in a public space. Ampuat said he did not want to see the monarchy criticised any further. Last month, thousands of mainly young, black-clad Thai protesters converged on Bangkok's Democracy Monument in the city's largest, rowdiest anti-government protest in years, stretching deep into the night. Thailand is a kingdom whose ambiguous politics is defined by coups, often deadly street protests, is facing an unprecedented shock due to the coronavirus pandemic. With the economy in free fall, anger is boiling against the government, stacked with elderly former generals and supporters of the royal establishment. 
The demonstrations are a series of nearly daily student-led rallies around Thailand since mid-July that have demanded a resignation of Prime Minister Priya Chinachar and amendment to the military draft constitution they say maintaining army influence over the political system. The five organisers were summoned for questioning and to be here. Army Chief Apparat made no direct reference to the protesters in remarks at a military academy on Wednesday, but in a speech that mentioned the coronavirus, he took a swipe at the nation's haters, a term used increasingly to describe opponents of the Thai establishment. Hating the nation, hating one's own country, this a disease that is not curable, he told military cadets. Let's just hope this all can be worked out peacefully for the Thai people and the Thai nation. Australian Chinese coronavirus death toll stands at 247. Australia's second most populous state, Victoria, said on Thursday, August the 6th, eight people have died from a Chinese coronavirus in the last 24 hours, after reporting its deadliest day of the pandemic on Wednesday with 18 deaths. The state reported 471 new cases of the virus, compared with a record at 725 a day earlier. On Thursday morning, thousands of businesses were scrambled to operate under strict new rules, which limited the number of staff allowed on site in a bid to slow the virus spread. The state government only released a full list of businesses which are allowed to continue operating at 11pm last night, just one hour before the rules kicked in. The forced closure of companies in the entertainment-related travel and other sectors is expected to put 250,000 people out of work. Employees allowed to work on site now have to show a permit or official work ID. If they are stopped by police they can prove they can leave their homes or face a fine of up to $100,000 for businesses and $20,000 for individuals. The new crackdown for Victorians isolation breaches. A fine of up to $4,957 for failing to self-isolate for a second or subsequent time. The highest on-the-spot penalty available to Victorian police. Police can also take offenders to court where they can face fines of up to $20,000. People who have tested positive or who are in close contact with those carrying the Chinese coronavirus can no longer leave their homes for exercise. This is a full list of what is closed in Melbourne's stage 4 lockdown. Furniture wholesalers, personal care including hairdressers, car washes, pubs, taverns, bars, brothels and prostitution services. Clubs, nightclubs, food courts, restaurants, cafes, etc, etc, architectural, engineering, technical services, travel and tour agencies, non-urgent call centre operations, non-urgent elective surgery, museums, parks and gardens, ski resorts, gambling, places of worship, except what is required to stream services or private soup kitchens and food banks. Manufacturing of non-metallic materials and fabricated metal products, furniture, wood, textile, leather, fur, dressing knitted, clothing, footwear, domestic appliances, all office-based and professional businesses except those delivering critical services must work from home. Operating but limited. Building sites of more than three stories, 25% of workforce. Less than three stories, five workers on site at a time only. Meat processing, workers cut by a third. Shopping centres for access to permitted retail only. Public transport, ride share and taxis only. To support access to permitted services for permitted workers. This is interesting. Thoroughbred harnesses and greyhound racing with a minimum number of essential participants to operate safely. But please don't follow this list, it's only a guideline. Go to the Australian Government websites for a full and accurate list.
escapees on the road and were tracked down via social media. Six buffalo escaped from an abattoir and social media posted photographs of the buffalo walking down the road. The buffalo were rounded up and once again social media a petition raised 300,000 baht to purchase them from the abattoirs. They were released on Thursday and now will live out their lives on a farm for rescued animals in Ratchaberry province. So that's a good outcome for both sides of the stake, you might say. Now maybe this is a world first. The Emirates has and is the first airline to cover COVID-19 costs for travellers. That's been announced as, as Australian travellers. Not that anybody will be travelling, you know, quite yet. Emirates passengers will be laughing as the airline revealed it would cover costs of medical and quarantine should there be, that is the traveller, be diagnosed with COVID during their travels. Passengers would be covered for a cost of $245,000 for medical expenses and $160 uh, for quarantine for up to 14 days. Subject to conditions um, and certifications, but it's good news. Let's see if a few other airlines uh, try and pick up some customers and sort a few things out. Johnny out. Over in the Philippines, the virus situation has not treated them as well as others. And yes, the world is reaching out for people to have certifications, what have you, in reference to their tests for the virus, fit to travel, uh, general testing certificates. The police raided a print shop in Quezon City. The shop was printing fake COVID result certificates. Apart from being illegal, what about the impact to others as this doesn't help the spread of the virus? It also reminds me of a story a little while back. A man entering the Kingdom of Thailand in the northern regions also had a fake certificate. And he was later on found dead in Pattaya of COVID. So I hope this practice is stamped out very fast. Johnny out. Johnny's I am reporting, foreign labourers are set to return to Thailand. The Ministry of Labour has approved immigrant labour back into the kingdom. Predominantly two groups of people. 69 plus thousand workers with work visas who have requested re-entry and 42 plus thousand workers without work permit but have submitted a letter of demand by their employee, sorry, employer. Both groups must have a fit for travel certificate, buy a two year health insurance and spend 14 days in quarantine. So it looks like the kingdom's getting back on top of their construction process. Good on them, Johnny out. Pattaya, as we know, when it rains, it floods. Well, some very astute and alert locals have put it out to the governing officials. They said it's quite easy to fix. Thousands of food vendors operating almost 24 hours a day. Food markets all over town operating afternoons and evenings. They all have one thing in common. At the end of when they finish their shifts, 
They all do the same thing, pouring the leftovers down the drains. With long periods of no rain, this festering waste sits in the drains, rotting, and yes, the smell. So, the smell's a problem also. From taxis, vendors, bars, in fact, most cover the drains with a mat or a piece of carpet to stop the smell. So when it does rain, everybody runs for cover, but the drains are still covered with these mats. The water pools and then turns the streets into rivers because it can't run down the drains. So now that this has come to light, Vendors caught tipping waste in the drains will be fined, but most run away. And people returning the mats to cover the drains will be fined. So the outcome of this might be very, very simple. Myself, I think during the longer periods of time between rain the city could also implement flushing the drains with its outfall water. Now maybe that would help the situation also. Johnny out. As we know, driving in Thailand can be hazardous. Now this story has brought a tear to my eye. A truck lost its load after swerving to avoid hitting a car. The load, cans of beer, were littered all over the road. Again, with the help of social media, residents of Champagne were on the scene very help and helpfully cleaned up. No one was injured, but quite a few cans spilled their guts. That's a shame. If I'd have been there, I would have done my best to help the clean up effort myself. Johnny out.